Global Securities, they have um, all these things that you basically have to do. So because they've been really prone to fraud in the past, there's very special regulations surrounding them. And they pretty much ignored all of them. Now, I wonder if they're going to really put the fire to the, the, the guy that has quit or the guy that quit and allowed the others to allow it to go through FINRA's office and cleared and checkmarked and all that. Well, you have to understand that by looking at the DTCC and all of their conglomerate uh, companies that are underneath their corporate heading, if you look at their bylaws, they specifically have stated when they opened their company that they were setting specific things in place to make sure there wasn't going to be fraud and how to protect people. And that's exactly what they, that, the that's what they, thing. that's exactly what they, what happened too. And they, yeah. all of those things that they prescribed that they put in place to protect us, why we should feel comfortable with our money going through their organization, they absolutely did zero of those things to actually protect us. Like, for instance, if you have a security that has a Class A preferred share, how would you let somebody with the wrong backer claim that security? Because so everybody thinks, well, it was wrong because, you know, these two market makers came together and took it to the market. And yes, that's wrong. But what was really, really wrong with that is when they filed the paperwork to do that, they did it under Torch. Well, Torch didn't exist when MMTLP existed. Uh, so, so here's how that works. The assets go into MMTLP at the moment they kill Torch. Yep. Then that that's controlled by metamaterials. So if somebody was going to issue the security to trade, it would have to be done underneath the metamaterials corporate header because they're the ones that actually controlled and owned MMTLP from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They did it underneath Torch, which means that security technically doesn't exist, and it doesn't represent the assets of the, uh, the oil and gas industry because that, that specific picker – belonged to a company that was deleted, therefore it was nothing. So now you have the stock market trading on a stock that was absolutely zero. It was nothing. Sounds like nothing sounds like money laundering to me. It. Well, it sounds like a whole bunch of things went really, really sideways, and nobody bothered to say, hey, we have a problem here, because this is the equivalent of you see Kmart go bankrupt, right? Mm -hmm. And basically somebody issuing Kmart stock the day after they go bankrupt and they close their company. That, I mean, that, that's the perfect explanation, actually. <laughs> so it's like you have a stock of something that doesn't exist. You have a stock of a dead company that is no longer in existence. Well, my thing is also, you know, after all the S1s that were dropped and the delays, how come somebody bigger up or the heads up did not catch this or did they not want to catch it? They said, all right, we're going to let it happen. We're going to see who jumps out and we'll probably lose a lot of people along the way to limit our losses or we'll catch a lot of losses because a lot of people might jump in. I don't think that they gave like a rats behind. You know what I mean? So... So this is what this was with the S1, with all of these filings that had to be done. Some of them were such small, erroneous errors that they knew that was going to happen. And so what I believe was going on is you had a group of individuals that were doing all kinds of illegal stuff when it comes to the security. And what they turned around and did was they were under the belief that these S1s were never going to transpire until months and months later down the road. And so they kept screwing them up to where the S1 couldn't be accepted over and over and over. And so these guys thought, you know what? 
they're doing whatever they're doing. We can just keep kicking the can down the road and we'll suck every bit of life out of this thing that we can. And what they were doing was they were setting them up and baiting them. And then all of a sudden they closed it and dropped the hammer on them and trapped them. Now, can you hear me or am I a robot? No, I got you. I can hear you. All right. So you got to remember, too, that since the original... Um, okay, hang on a second. Stuff. There's massive feedback. Buzz, turn your speakerphone off. This happens every time you turn your speakerphone off, buddy. Uh, you're killing me, Smalls. All right, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. You're clear. You are crystal clear, sir. <laughs> so, after the Roaring Kidder testimony, right, they had to scramble and figure out new ways to continue getting their money, right? And they've continued to do so for two years. The only problem is retail hasn't gone away. They just learned, and they learned that instead of diamond handing one or two stocks, that they could build equity and then make their moves when they have a larger portfolio. And at the same time, they've learned to catch on to SEC. But like when when it, when in the stock market trading history do you have this many eyes on Edgar filing and forms and all this different stuff, right? True. So we can track, right? So now and now. Now that they didn't just let GME and AMC play out and take the loss there and continue doing their shenanigans, right? Their eyes are on, and now look, we have millions of eyes everywhere and thousands of people right now marching against the SEC. Like Charles. Well, Bates. they're not. They're not marching against the SEC. They're marching to ask the SEC to actually well, do their job. I meant, I meant up against the SEC building. Like, they're, right. Yeah, they're correct. Mar they're, they're marching for free markets, right? Yes. And, and true transparency. And at that point, like, now Charles Dean is from the point where he knew nothing about MMPLP, and I was begging, begging being a Twitter whore and tagging him every time I can. Now he's down there with John Berta, right? Whether or not my yep. tweet did anything, John Berta finally got his got in front of him and eyes are on well eyes are and on the, all the stories now well and here's the thing so there's something that you touched on that's really important that most people are neglecting to hear because they hear specific trigger words like short squeeze and amc and gme and they hear just the things they want to hear and they stop listening but what they need to hear is that where this is different from AMC and GME is with AMC and GME, these guys learn, right? They, they learned a whole lot of things. And one of the things that these big companies that are doing this to us learned was they learned how to counterfeit and create their own money in the way of stock certificates. Where are you guys yeah. going? Look at that, sir. Okay, I love you, honey. Go get your your uh, wacky tobacco, your your ganja. I will see you when you get home. I love you. Sure. I gotta I gotta go back inside, so I'm gonna be muted again. I just wanted to get that piece in before I. No, did, like... no, you're good. I just want people to realize that the difference is instead of just sorting the stock with this one, they figured out how to counterfeit it. So now, and the difference is, so when you short a stock, you still have to pay something to short it, right? Like it's not free. With this, they learned how to have no skin in the game and collect all the money. Now, you think this is like internal traders and, in a brokerage, and, or do you think it's like a, a individual money. retailer, or just a who knows? Well, no, I know uh, who did it. It's two market it's makers. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. So, well, actually, about, it's, um, actually, it's three big companies. <laughs> How about like the with, coins? Did they make a bunch of coins? I, I was hearing that. I just stopped following that. Like, okay. uh, like the meme so, coin. Yeah, so they're making meme coins. Oh, and uh, it, uh, okay, somebody's turning into a computer. Alan, Alan, er, 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 that's Sean. Sean. That's Sean. That's Sean. Sean, mute, please. Go ahead. Okay, so here's the thing. They, if you just saw what the SEC did, they 
came out with a potential rule change that says they are going to control um, when you can tokenize specific securities. This is really important because right now they don't have a marketplace for um, tokens or for coins. However, we know that the U.S. government is working right now to make a threshold list, basically, that says if you meet these requirements, you can apply to be traded on this new market that we're going to create, and it's essentially going to be similar to, like, the NASDAQ or the OTC markets, and what it's going to be is it's going to be a marketplace that is regulated um, and has specific conditions for coins and for tokens for ones that can prove that they're solvent and stable. I just want to state real quick, real quick, real quick, XDC has a partnership with the NASDAQ, not financial advice. Go ahead. Right. So they're working together. All these, all these people are working in the government to make this come about because coins are a place where you can get robbed or a place where you can make good money. And so what they're going to do is they're going to bring the stable good ones into a market where there's rules and regulations. What will eventually happen is the people are going to ditch the ones that are not in those – that are not in that parameter because there's no rules there, and this one's going to have rules and regulations that you know govern it. So because that's happening, they're issuing this – they're trying to issue this rule change right now. But the minute they have a market and you can you know, say, hey, Alan called this out on Buzz's channel first, what they're going to do – is they are going to issue the rule that they're working on now. They're going to change it. They're going to do a revisement of it. And essentially in that amendment, it's going to say that any tokenized security that is using, that is being used for collateral purposes will have to go through this controlled U S market. Well, the minute you do that, it has to be one of these big solvent coins. Now, all of a sudden, you stop what we know is happening with the tokenization of stocks. Now, I can't get any further into how stocks are being tokenized right now because there's a lot of people that are working on this, and there's a lot of very sensitive information there. But I can tell you that this is why they full throttled the fraud that they're doing and it, the reason for doing it was to be able to get as much done as they can while they can still do these yeah, types. Yeah, capitalize of on it. Right, so because they know the door's closing. The other thing that we realized that happened was because that door's closing, MMTLP was a test. It was a test by these big, bro or by these big guys that are basically robbing us blind. It was a test to see if they could pull off um, counterfeiting OTC shares. Mm. And if they could counterfeit OTC shares, all they would have to do is to hide all of this. All they have to do is they counterfeit all these shares. They get them trading. They let it hype up. They let all these people trade it. And then when it dies and it goes down to almost zero in price – because they kill, you know, they, they inflict severe damage to it um, by sorting it. Essentially, they buy it all back, all their counterfeited shares, and they shred them. Because once they buy them back, they don't have to disclose what they do with them. They can call them a loss and write them off. And they can literally put them in the shredder and say, okay, that doesn't exist anymore. We took this loss here when really they didn't take a loss. They made hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars because they don't have to report income. And billions with a B, you, just to be clear. No, you don't, no. Yeah. but what you don't have to do is you don't have to report income when you counterfeit a share because you don't have to show where you purchased it from. So there's not somebody else reporting taxes on the other side of that transaction because you just made it up out of thin air and you counterfeited it. It gives you the ability to say, hey – you can see where we were trading these securities. We took this massive loss. This thing is gone. It's dead and, and deceased. But here's our losses, and they don't ever have to account for um, what they actually had to pay for those in the first place. 
And if they did, it would be really odd that they got them for free. Oh, it's like who's overseeing the overseers? That's what I want to know. What, what, that's really on? simple. That's a, the, have, that's the problem. You have FINRA and the SEC is run by guys that worked at the hedge funds. The other problem we have is we have this thing called the stock borrow program. Oh. This was made. This was designed and made by Bernie Madoff. And that's really interesting. You can't make this shit up. Found, that somebody found a back door to use this as a, a device for scamming. Weird. That's really interesting. Then you have PFOF, which is the payment for over for order flow. There's another thing that allows for high frequency trading, which we know that high frequency trading can put liquidity in the market and keep the market stable. However, it's highly abusable because if you do specific things with it, now you're using it to actually control the market instead of stabilize the market. And you can force and kill stocks down to nothing um, when you sold them at very high dollar amounts and then rebought them really, really cheap to replace them with. So there are specific mechanisms that um, this gentleman that went to prison designed when he was the when he was in charge at one of these organizations because he was the head of the board, and we still use them today. It's, it's absolutely mind-boggling that you, the guy that perpetrated the biggest fraud in the financial market, we left his systems in place. You would think that we'd go through all that shit, but not in America. Not in America. <laughs> no, I just went to the next guy who's going to run the show. <laughs> well, Keep the funny the game thing going. is, is Madoff didn't even realize what he had done when he built it. He was trying to build good things. So I've done a lot of research into this. He was actually trying to build something really good so that with all the bad shit he was doing, he could hide it. And he could basically say, look at all these things I did. Look at all this stuff that I did that was great. Like, I'm per nobody would ever stand against him because everything he was doing was helping the stock market. He was building these wonderful things. It's like the but reversed, uh, reversed, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, my bad. No, no, you're all good. Brain, I was just... brain fart, brain fart. No, no, you're fine. I was just basically saying that um, in his mind, subconsciously, when he built these systems, because he was a thief and a fraudster, not even realizing it, he put back doors in it. Not even intentionally. <laughs> and these other people went and said, I want to look at these things really, really close. And then they figured out that, oh my gosh, this guy was doing these things. But when he built this, you have to remember, his brain worked off of how do I steal as much money as I can. And other people realized this and exploited it because even though it wasn't something he did intentionally with those systems, you still had a guy that believed in fraud and believed in robbing people designing them. And at a fundamental level, his brain works a specific way that normal people's doesn't because a normal person won't rob their grandma. Mm -hmm. 